Tennis star Venus Williams suffers from it. Sjogren's syndrome has just recently gained notoriety. Even though it affects thousands, Dr. Elliot Rosenstein is from the Institute for Rheumatic and Autoimmune D Diseases at Overlook Hospital in Summit, New Jersey. He joins us this morning to talk all about it. it. It is a rare condition. I don't think I've ever heard of it. Explain exactly what it is. It's actually not as rare as people think, and it's all because of Venus Williams that uh, attention's been brought to it, but it affects anywhere between a half and, and 2 percent of the U.S. population. So it's, it's probably three million Americans currently affected by the condition. Is it a nuisance or should we seriously be concerned about this? Well, the answer, Frank, is both. Uh, for many people, it's just a nuisance, it leads to dry eyes and mm -hmm. dry mouth. Uh, but for some people who have it very severely, it can affect internal organs. And it's one of the conditions that has a, a very clear-cut link with the development of lymphoma, one of the uh, lymphatic cancers. How would it affect internal organs? Is, is it because there's not enough fluid, not enough water in your organs? How would it affect it in layman's terms? Well, it's not so much that there's not enough fluid, but the, the whole reason that the tears and the, uh, the saliva disappear are be, is because the glands get replaced by inflammatory tissue. And that can happen with internal organs also. So sometimes the lungs can become inflamed, the kidneys can become inflamed, peripheral nerves, joints. In natural aging, you just simply lose some of the ability to, I'm assuming, create uh, saliva and, and fluid in general. Why isn't there are more people who suffer from this as for natural, well, based on natural aging? Well, a lot of people do develop dry mouth and dry eyes from aging, but mm -hmm. not to the severity that somebody with Sjogren's syndrome has. I mean, uh, they can become parched. And, and very often with the, the dryness of the mouth, it leads to, uh, to development of cavities, uh, gingivitis and periodontal disease, fungal infections of the mouth. Uh, we forget that saliva is more than just a lubricant. Mm -hmm. uh, it, has, it has 80 proteins in it that serve digestive function immune function so, so people can get mouth infections, people can have difficulty with digestion. And it's a similar situation with the eyes. The eyes can develop infections, uh, the cornea can dry out and get injured. Can it be identified easily? It's, it's a very difficult diagnosis to make and uh, ophthalmologists and dentists very often will be the ones to, to first alert the patient to the, the fact that there's something more than just the dryness of age occurring. Um, can it be done through a blood test? There are blood tests that help support the, the diagnosis, mm -hmm. but the, the blood tests are imperfect. People can have the blood test abnormalities and not have the condition. People can have the condition and not have the blood test abnormalities. What can a person do, if anything, to, to protect themselves from some coming down with this syndrome? Well, you can't really prevent it from occurring, but once you know you have the condition, there are things to do to, to try to prevent it from, from having uh, devastating uh, effects. For instance, if somebody has severe dry mouth, uh, chewing sugarless gum, mm -hmm. drinking water frequently, uh, the, there's a whole series of products made specifically for people with dry mouth. Uh, for dry eyes, using moisturizing drops, using a, a medication called Restasis, which is a very heavily advertised on yes. television. Um, that, that's not just a moisturizer, that's actually a, a medication which helps uh, encourage tear production. And there are other prescription medications that will increase the, uh, the, the function of the salivary glands. Is it often misdiagnosed? You mentioned that some of the symptoms are pains in your joints if it's severe and so on and so forth. Is it often misdiagnosed? It's often misdiagnosed. It's often undiagnosed. Uh, so many people who have it mildly uh, don't bring it to the attention of their doctors or the, the doctors may just pass it off as you were suggesting something that happens to people as we age. Uh, sometimes it's confused with other autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or lupus. Sometimes it coexists with those conditions. Mm -hmm. About half of people with Sjogren's syndrome do have another condition associated with it. How did uh, Venus Williams find out that she had this? And uh, obviously she's gone public with it, and I'm sure it affects her tennis game. So I gave you three questions right there. Maybe we could tackle those. Well, I wasn't involved in her care, so I don't know the specifics, but uh, I, I do know from reading the, the media that uh, her symptoms were primarily joint symptoms, mm -hmm. and uh, she had to withdraw from one of the, the major competitions because of it. Uh, she, she has never in public that I'm aware of said anything about dry eyes or dry mouth. It's not debilitating. In other words, if you have the right medication or you follow the right procedures, she can play as she has or does it uh, degenerate as time goes on? Well, there are many things that can be done to help control the condition, certainly mm -hmm. to treat the symptoms. 
but the condition can get worse, and in a small percentage of people, it can, it can affect their overall health. We have about a minute left. Let's talk about the possibility of it being associated with cancer, which we are told it is in, to in some cases. So many autoimmune conditions can be linked with cancers, in particular lymphomas. Lymphomas mm -hmm. are malignancies of the, the lymphoid tissue, which are involved in immune reactions, and these diseases being autoimmune, uh, diseases, one, one can see the, the potential association between lymphoid malignancies and autoimmune conditions. So that, that connection exists with rheumatoid arthritis and lupus, but it exists to an even greater extent with Sjogren's syndrome. And somewhere between 5 and 8 percent of, of uh, people with Sjogren's syndrome will develop lymphoma. Quickly, what should we do? Should we ask our doctor to screen us for this on, when we do a regular examination? I shouldn't ask our doctor to screen in terms of blood tests, but certainly to ask the right questions. Um, if somebody has dry mouth or dry eyes, it should be brought to the physician's attention. Okay, Dr. Elliot Rosenstein, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. My thank pleasure. You,